Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle book review of X-Men, the Omnibus Edition, Volume 1. Obviously a recreation of the first issue there, the X-Men versus Magneto, in the sensational style Fantastic Four. And, well, you've got all the covers on the back, obviously X-Men number 1, all the way through to X-Men number 30. Now, I actually have, haven't checked, I'm certain they're all included, 18, 19, 20, yes, I'm certain they are. However, of course, there's some great stories. You've got Kazar or Kazar. You've got uh, the Sentinels. You've got Unus. You've got uh, the Juggernaut, the Stranger. Loads of the Mimic. Some of the characters maybe not so well known. Banshee, of course. Re-enter the Mimic, as well as the Warlock Wakes. Now, that was originally, I think, was Merlin from the uh, uh, Thor stories. And, of course, you've got the classic there, the Evil Mutants, the Brotherhood of the Evil Mutants. So there's 796, I think, pages in here. This book came out fairly recently. Now, I'm just going to run through it, but I'm just going to quickly show you, compare it, obviously, with an issue that's fallen to pieces now, just in my hands. Here's an original. Uh, this one is from issue 30. And you can see it's a bit bigger, slightly bigger than the original. So you've got the Warlock Awakes. And I'm just going to move that. Brilliant story, I must admit, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I must, some of course prefer the original colouring. I mean, I think the original colouring is absolutely fine. It's always great to see these uh, original stories. Of course, got the Merlin there, stalemate, psychic screens, etc., etc. And of course, some of the things that are not included often in the omnibus editions are things like this, the My Mighty Marvel Checklist. I always love those. And of course, these lovely adverts here. you got here the X-Men there. You can see the X-Men there as well. Daredevil and Sergeant Fury. However, you got that. But you've also got these. Of course, you've got the... And I'll probably be getting rid of this one. I must say, it's one of the ones that... It's really quite good. I'm really quite perfectly happy with it in black and white. So you can see this is the essential edition, black and white. Very crisp, very sharp. Possibly more so than even the colour versions in some ways. So, you know, you might actually prefer seeing both, having the black and white version as well as the colour one. And of course you've got there, the, all the various characters there. Mastermind, obviously, uh, Quicksilver, Scarlet Witch and Magneto, the Toad and the Juggernaut, of course. Brilliant bit of uh, artwork there from Alex Toth. I love that, that period. Brilliant stories. Sentinels, of course, as well. However, that's that. That's the essential one. So I had to get that because I didn't have the Epic. And I still haven't got the Epic. However, this is the Epic collection. This is uh, volume two. And this covers X-Men 24 to 45. So unfortunately, there's a bit of an overlap. So if you want to have all the stories and you haven't got, of course, the X-Men Omnibus volume two that covers the other material, you're probably going to have to keep this or etc. So uh, this is obviously the one that's probably a bit of an awkward one. Unless I, I say, get the omnibus edition for the volume two, I will have to keep this one. So, got that. Now, onto the omnibus itself. Obviously, hardback, really nice thing, and it clicks, as it says there, one to issue 31, which is a bit of an unusual one since obviously there were 66 issues in the early one, so there's a few probably less than the other one. So let's just take this, this off and, and crunch the... Uh, as always, I'm certain I, it's never going to be perfect condition. I just damaged that very nicely. Always away with those. However, X-Men Omnibus and... Well, it's absolutely lovely. Of course, absolutely great. Now, this is slightly getting smaller and smaller. I think at some point it's going to end up like a, be like this, a thin little, pa <laughs> that's the way the papers are getting, paper guessing. It's uh, 796 pages. Eventually it'll just like be very ultra thin paper. But still at the moment it's a, because of course when you look at it, and I'm quite, and I had the earlier versions of this. Uh, it was a bit thicker than this. I'm quite certain that was the case. So uh, this is, uh, but still absolutely fine. I really love it. Perfectly reasonable, decent paper quality. I have no particular problem. And you can see there the list of all, the, obviously, the people. Alex Toss there, number 12. Now, there's also other people, obviously, inkers, letters. And again, always sad to say, colorists. I always think the colorist is just a bit uncredited. Why? I must admit, I don't even know why they put that. Why do they put uncredited? 
it just seems to be pointless. You know, it really, it would be nice that there was actually, didn't they even write it down? Who did the colouring? The colouring is sometimes the most important thing to me. I love the colouring, as well as, of course, black and white. I'm, I have no, but if you're going to do the colouring, it's just, there you can see the X-Men, all the various stories there, all the way through 1963, all the way through to 1967. I wonder if they'll bring out a, a big one of those Taschen books, one of those massive ones uh, with the early issues so you see the original colouring. Again, because unfortunately it's not listed who did it. It's just a pity. But you've got obviously X there and of course a little bit of Stanley. Not too many of those sort of articles. There's a few at the back. I'll get to that later. But here's the first issue. Of course, classic first issue. Brilliant in the obviously sensational Fantastic Four star. And actually, they have got it obviously on the cover as well, slightly in a different position, which is odd, isn't it? In many ways, they've actually just put lowered it down. So instead of having it where it would have been, which would have been at the top, they've actually put it down a bit, which is a bit strange. But anyway, the strangest superheroes of all. Don't miss the, this fabulous first issue. And uh, I must admit, I did miss the first issue. I didn't buy it back then. I wasn't very old, particularly. I don't think I'd be, oh, I must go and rush and buy the X-Men. However, I did read it later, of course, in Fantastic. Was it in Terrific? Fantastic, I'm certain. And, of course, subsequently in the British comics, never bought a copy of X-Men number one. Sadly, of course, the price is now crazy. But you've got uh, their maximum pressure. And such power is attacking me. Blah, blah, blah. As near as power is as superhuman as my own. You'd think that Magneto would have done a bit of research. Surely he must have known that the X-Men, etc. These sort of characters, he obviously knew Professor X. So anyway, that's bye bye. No one can stop the Vanisher. Obviously, other than the X-Men, of course. But what a great sort of uh, brilliant cover, classic issue. Love that. Nothing can stop the Vanisher. And of course, the Vanisher, if he had actually probably worked out his powers a bit better, probably would have been virtually unstoppable. He was one of those. Quite a good character, but unfortunately, of course, he faced Professor X. And they had quite a few of those stories where Professor X uses his power, which is probably why they some pushed him a bit further to the back and sort of staying, basically. Because, of course, ultimately, he could do that all the time. He just, just zaps people. Oh, yeah, just, oh, yeah, you lose your memory. That's it. All the stories solved. So uh, it's always a bit one of those... But you've got that classic blob story. I love that one, the blob. And you've got the, obviously their training. Again, sort of diminishes the point of their training if you just basically put Professor X out there all the time because he just solves it. He just zaps the villain and that's it. Oh, you've forgotten. Oh, okay, resolved. And you've got the blob there again. Don't worry about me, sir. And of course, I love the original, uh, what now, lovely old snowman approach that uh, but the blob is a great story and of course you've got the classic one i love that and of course the green scarlet witch I wonder why they did that green cover most odd however the brotherhood of evil mutants i'm never certain they actually ever called themselves brotherhood of evil mutants you they thought they were the heroes they thought they were the ones actually so i don't think they were consider they considered problems themselves as evil mutants but still it was the way they did that a bit like the frightful four who would call himself the Frightful Four? You know, we're the, we're the heroes of our own story. However, the angel is trapped. And you, of course, got there the angel in what's Quicksilver again. And again, you've still got Scarlet Witch. She's still in green. She hasn't got... And I love this bit. You're disturbingly familiar with it. Ah, oh, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, it's that toad. We know who it is. Submariner turns up as well. Of course, at that point, I assume... He probably didn't, he didn't have his own issues at that point. So uh, Submariner joins the evil mutants. And again, they were pushing, joins the evil mutants. Pushing that. Poor old there. And again, you've got uh, the Scarlet Witch. No, the Scarlet Witch colour. Big, see, garish colour there and green. I feel I've been asleep. My head feels, etc., etc. And of course, got all the letter pages. I love the letter pages. And they're always fascinating to read. Always fascinating just to sort of read the comments at the time. I'd be very sad if they ever remove those. And again, it's one of those things that uh, I always think they should include the Marvel bullpen or those sort of stuff as well, the checklist as well. Just gives you the sort of feel of the time. Let's visit the X-Men. Actually, they changed that with, and also, of course, a good old pin-up as well, which is really nice. 
And then, of course, you've got the Avengers. Oh, you've got my Mighty Marvel checklist there. And that's the thing I always love looking at it, because you always see, oh, Fantastic Four 33, uh, Spider-Man 19, Avengers 10, you've got Strange Tales 127, Astonishing 62, so you've got Giant Man battling the Wasp. That was a bit of an unusual one. Sergeant Fury number 12. And you've got Kazar, of course, another one of those checklists there. You've got another 412, one of the classic ones, of course, the Hulk versus, uh, what's this? Oh, it's just something about the thing there. It's the greatest battle since the Hulk fought the thing. Oh, okay, that's really odd. Well, you've got the Stranger, the origin of Professor X. Of course, you've got the Juggernaut, great story. You've got the Juggernaut coming through there. I always love those Juggernaut stories. The game Mighty Marvel checklist. Of course, you've got here the Fantastic Four 43 with the Frightful Four. So sort of, uh, some, let's visit the X-Men, yet more of these. And you've got the Sentinels, and I love this one, the Magneto story. They were great stories. Magneto, Magneto turned up a lot in those early things. I think they sort of realised that maybe they were overusing, because of course, after it, then suddenly the stories changed very much. Uh, and of course, Roy Thomas, Roy Thomas taking over. So you've got I, Lucifer, you've got other stories in, you've got some very weird ones. Some of the stories were less than brilliant. I must admit, some of these uh, creatures, these robot ones, are just loose for. They were a bit silly stories. Nefera, oh, what's the name? Ah, uh, all good stuff. However, and of course, all the way through, I'm just going to get to the classic. Mimic, I always felt that he should have been a member of the, that would have, but again, maybe it would diminish the X-Men by having a character that was obviously had all of the abilities in the but Banshee as well. That was, for me, the limitation of stories, and I'm not surprised they didn't extend at the X-Men. The fact it was only just a group of five just didn't really sort of make any sense. Even, you know, back to me, Back then, I just thought, you know what? This could do with a bit more of a, a team. And you had like this, obviously, my Marvel Girl. That was it. You'd think they would have introduced a little bit more, some crates, some sort of... You did sort of have like the support characters, but it wasn't the same sort of level of cast that you had, like in Spidey. Ditko had loads, like Gwen Stacy, Flash Thompson, all those sort of characters. And I just thought it just made the story so much better and it would would have helped the stories a lot more. They sort of had it with, when they had that club where they'd go occasionally, they would sort of have the yo-yo and sort of a Greenwich Village kind of thing. But it just didn't really have that same sort of support cast in the way that, however, does have a bit of extras, which is good. Really. You got two unused covers. You got this one from issue 10 and also issue 25. So you got that. Also, you've got some great ads. I love the ads. Adverts are always great. I wish they'd include more, to be honest. However, look at those brilliant. What a what a month that was. I mean, you had some brilliant classic, of course, the Avengers number 16, one of my favourites. Fantastic Four, of course, the Doc Doom one. Blind man shall lead them. I think that's what it says. Yes, it does say that. And also, you've got these, which is great. You've got all the reprint issues as well. So sometimes these covers are really good. Now, they're not as good, I don't think, these ones, Marvel superheroes, as the Marvel collector item classics. I always love those, but they never really had that sort of range. You've got here Amazing Adventure. I think they were probably in the 1970s. I can't remember, but they, they were a bit later, those ones. Some of the covers weren't as good. Some covers were good. Obviously, they used the original Beware the Blob. But you've got this one here, Carnival of Death which is odd. I don't know why they did that. So reprinted material from issue X-Men 3 and 42. Very strange. Anyway, I haven't got any of those issues, so I can't really work out what was included or not in those. But you've got the Carnival of Death there. Some of the covers were really not that good. Assault on Fortress Magneto. You can hardly see, hardly make out Magneto at all there. That's issue eight of Amazing Adventure. But you've also got these as well. You've got some uh, variations, which are quite uh, unusual. Professor X looking very odd there. Poor old Professor X. However, you got that, and you've also got those ones, and you've got some additional ones there. The early years, etc. And that's it. Absolutely superb. I love this omnibus edition. X-Men omnibus. As I say, I will probably obviously be keeping this for now because I haven't got yet the X-Men omnibus number two. But I will be getting rid of this one because this is obviously is superseded by this one. So, uh, yeah. Essential X-Men number one. This is brilliant. Absolutely, totally recommended.